Hi everybody, I'm Roy Firestone and this is Facebook Live. Usually on this format, we don't do a lot of interviews, but we're going to do one today for a very special person and you'll meet him in a second. About 16 years ago, almost to the day, uh, this story hit CBS Evening News and I saw it and I was so touched by it, so moved by it, I wanted to learn more about it. And I've done this story in my live show, my my variety live show that I do for corporate corporations, um, maybe five or six hundred times since then. We call this story, Take Your Best Shot. And really, it begins at a place, well, a small place, a place it's called Greek Athena High School, outside of Rochester, New York. It's the home of a five foot five inch, at the time, basketball team manager named Jason McElwain. Now, Jason is autistic. He's one of every 35 boys in this country. One out of every 35 boys are autist, autistic, if you can believe that. They could be isolated and separated, ostracized. But not this young man. He found a way to belong as a team manager of a basketball team. Get him motivated and uh, hand out water and just be enthusiastic. Let's have a hard practice tomorrow, all hour and a half, and let's get ready for Arcadia. Let's go. One, two, three, two. It was almost at the end of the season when his coach Jim Johnson decided to give J-Mac a thrill. He was going to let him play in a varsity game, having never played in high school before. He gets him into the game with about uh, roughly four minutes left, as you see right there. And the crowd went crazy. Some of them expected J-Mac to play, some didn't, but they had little J-Mac masks, as you can see right there. Now J-Mac's first shot was somewhat forgettable. Was it close? Did you almost make I just, it? I just airballed it. <laughs> I'm like, just, dear God, please, let's just get him a basket. Well, the next shot wasn't close either. That missed. But then suddenly he hit this three-pointer and it ignited something in his soul. J-Mac was then really on fire. If I wasn't there to witness it, I wouldn't have believed it, you know. You caught fire. I just caught fire. I was hot as a pistol. <laughs> well, the pistol wasn't done. He kept shooting and he kept hitting. I don't know how many points it was. I think it was close to six three-pointers in just a few moments late in the game. And it was a school record, including, at the buzzer, this 32-foot shot, which was really, truly remarkable for a young man who never played, and some people said shouldn't have played. Well, he changed the way people look at autistic kids in this country, I think, in that one broadcast that night. Millions of people were inspired and moved, and it taught us it's not about the love of the game. It's really about the love in the game. That is J. Mac's story. Well, it is 16 years later, and I'm thrilled to bring on our show, J. Mac. 16 years later, 33 years old, going to be 34 in October. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Praise God. All right. You know, I wanted to ask you about that night. Um, do you think you, you moved America, that story moved America in a way that maybe they hadn't thought? Or is it just the feel-good story without people really understanding the hardships of autism? Well, what I think it was, uh, the, it wasn't just all me it was if you looked at the reaction of the bench on our team and our six man and our cheer, cheerleading uh, squad and like everyone was like the, the way everyone uh, outside the court was exploding on every shot I made and it was just one of those games where everything fell in line that night and and I praise the Lord for that but the biggest biggest goal of my life is when we we finally won sectionals three weeks later so <laughs> you know people don't know that you are now coaching all those years later you're now coaching basketball and you just got your driver's license so many incredible things happen right well, it's a driver's permit to correct that um yeah i mean i've been coaching for 16 years um jimmy and i were together for 12 um, and he, fri he finally retired. That's what then I, I was there the last game that he coached with you when he retired. Last regular season game. Yeah, it, it was, uh, it was hard to see, uh, see us both go out, uh, the way we did, um, on loss, but, um, but the memories of us, what we did with that program was unbelievable, but, um, it goes to show you what, uh, 
goes to show you what talent we had too. We were blessed with. I was going to ask you about the other things you've done. I mean, just to, for people who don't know, you got to meet the president of the United States, then President Bush. He came he yep. came off an airplane to meet you. You ran in the Boston Marathon, I think, more than a one or two times, several times. I've made it. I've run it four times. Four um, times. And I've you also stuff. you also are a keynote speaker. You've done yep. some virtual speaking, but you've been an in demand speaker. What is your message about the can do part of autism, as well as the very real, very hard life for autistic families and autistic um, citizens? What's, what's your message regarding that? Well, well, they said that I would be able to walk, I would be able to talk, put on a pair of clothes. I'm standing, I'm standing here, aren't I? I'm talking, aren't I? And, uh, played every sport in the neighborhood growing up that my brother played and I followed, I just followed everything that he did. And then I fell in love with the game of basketball and I was a runner in high school. This was a national broadcast on the CBS evening news. People saw it. People were moved by it. People were inspired by it. That night, what came over you, J Mac? Why do you think you had that night? Was it ordained? Do you think, do you think that was destined to happen? No, I mean, it was, uh, I shot 500 makes a day and uh, to a thousand shots a day up until, uh, and I always prepared myself for every, uh, any opportunity I was going to get. Back then, I didn't understand that God was watching over us that night, watching over not only me, but my family and, uh, and all of us in that gym that night. And uh, he just blessed uh, with things that I never dreamed of in my life. You know, I remember we, we talked to you, had a, a manager's job or assistant manager's job in a supermarket chain up in the area. I remember that you were going on your way to another Boston Marathon. What kind of mail do you, did you get? Do you get even today? I know you had a book out. I know Coach Johnson's had a book out. Um, what kind of people take away from that great night 16 years ago for you, J-Mac? It opened the door. Um for coaches to give an opportunity to kids with disabilities on a mainstream quote unquote norm uh, inclusion with um, with other kids in sports. I mean, now you see um, more stories out there that a manager got in the game, a football game or a basketball game or a blind kid crossing the finish line in a race, like all over the country. And that's the stuff I still get. Um, there's not a day in my life since that moment that people don't still don't still talk about. And um, it, it's, it's just been a blessing in the last uh, 15 and a half years, going to be 16 next month. Um, and I've been blessed to, do, uh, blessed to do all these things. So now I'm a bus attendant for Greece Central. You are a person, a figure that has inspired millions of people, really, truly. Now, I know I know you do a lot of speaking. I know you do a lot of personal appearances, some virtually because of COVID right now. But I also want you to talk about the fact that not every young man or and it's mostly boys uh, who get who are autistic. Uh, there are some obviously some girls, but it's largely Autism affects boys more, as I said, one out of 34. But I wonder if you could address the hardships too. I mean, you were on very low on the spectrum, very, what they call functional. I don't even know if that offends you, that word. No, it, it doesn't offend me at all. I didn't talk till I was eight years old. I haven't shut up since. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean. It's hard though. Autism is really hard on a family and it can be heartbreaking and, too. And, right? uh, and, and you know, I mean, it, I've, I, I'm blessed I had the support system I had. Um, like the biggest thing for me going through school was test anxiety. And like 48 hours ago, I got my permit test, the permit certification to drive and um, stay off the road, everyone. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh I, people thought I would never be able to drive. And I just proved that the other day, but passing that. Um, but, but, it, but you know what I mean, though? It is hard for a lot of families with a higher. Other, other, it's, the thing is, though, Roy, um, when, when you have success, 
or you have bad moments. You really find out who your true friends are and who aren't. And the, the, where me, where I struggled back when I was 17 and I took this for granted, um, everyone wants to be on the light when you are successful, when your name is popular. And there are people that want to make money off you. There are people that want to be a part of your light in yeah. every walk. Wherever the cameras are, if your cameras are with you, there's people that want to be a part of it. Yeah. In the final yeah. moments, we're, we're, okay. talking, we're talking about uh, autism as a very powerful uh, force in, in impacting millions of people's lives, families' lives, as well as the people. I never like to use the word victim, and I don't think you'd like to use that word either, but it is a challenge, and well, it's, they, a hard, it's uh, a hard you turn, it, you turn it into a special ability. and um, If you biggest, can, if you can, right? If you can. Um, but the biggest part, the biggest fight that family, parents especially, um, they have to, it's it's you have to deal with school districts. Um, some are not don't understand. How, uh, teachers or st- school districts don't understand how until this day don't know how to handle kids with disabilities, um, uh, or don't understand how to treat them. Some staff members have been uh, don't uh, they don't. And luckily, I had the support when I was going through school. Um, and then another big fight is getting kids with disabilities. Some businesses and some do and some don't. The ones that don't, um, they, they don't uh, understand how to, how to uh, accommodate kids with disabilities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They treat everybody the same and it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Hey, J Mac, we're almost out of time. Um, I, first of all, it's great to see you again. And I'm, I'm so thrilled for all the success you've had and uh, getting your permit to drive and going to be almost 34. It's hard to believe you're going to almost be 34 this fall. Uh, final thoughts. What message would you like to, to send to people from who remember that night as a kind of emotional, inspiring moment they saw in the evening news? And this kid, 16 years later, is still going strong and better than ever. What message would you, message would you like to send? Well, the evil of excellence is good. Greatness is earned, not given. And to all the sports teams out there, um, it's not the will to win that is important. It's the will to prepare to win. If yeah, and you get what you deserve, you get what you work for. And the harder you work, the luckier you get. You never give up and you never, uh, you, you don't dream it. You can't become it. And also opportunity. You were given, yeah. even though it was the final game or the second to last game, whatever it was, you were given the chance to shine. And that's the other thing we're talking about. Young people, even kids who are challenged, yeah. given a chance, if they can, if they can apply what they have, a chance to shine is everything, right? It's a chance uh, to shine and and like I bring out my coaching after bits. I just think like it's easy now at the high school level or any level of basketball or any sports where kids that don't play as much they they think they they get comfortable and they start um, not being disinterested when it, it, and I was in that role where I was always interested in everything we were doing. Yeah. And as a player, as a manager, I wanted to know what um, defenses the other team was playing. I wanted to know <laughs> uh, Scotty reports. I wanted, like, I knew, uh, like, if I was going in the game, I wanted to know what I was doing. So. You know, it's funny. There's a reason Jim Johnson had you as a team manager, not just because he was doing something for charity or because he felt sorry for you, because you were an asset. You were an asset to your high school. And now you're an asset to the autism community. Uh, I think it's an inspiring story. Take good care of yourself. Stay healthy. It's great to see you, my friend. Uh, I just 16, give a big plug, uh, What's that? Well, remember Autism Up that you came down? 
Yep. We spoke uh, together at Autism Up, a function yeah. outside of Rochester. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was a great, it was very emotional. Very yeah. emotional. Oh, yeah. It was a very emotional moment. I especially want to thank Coach Jim Johnson and Jeff Amoroso for being the best role models in my life. Not as, not as a player, as a coach, but foremost as a man. If anybody wants, uh, anybody wants to donate, donate now to autismup.org. Fabulous. J-Mac, good to see you, my friend. You have a, a, a great rest of this year. Happy New Year to you. It's great to see you. Say hi to your family, too. All right. Thank you. God bless. God bless. Terrific. Thanks, J-Mac. Thank you. See you, brother. Bless. Be good. See you. That's Jason McElwain, 16 years from that very special night. And that's our show. I'm Roy Firestone. This is Facebook Live. We'll see you next week.